is Wraith from Wraith Rain. I'm an author of serialized gay romance fiction. Every week on this podcast, I'll be reading a chapter from one of my gay fantasy shifter serials called Dragon's Rain. I'll explain at the break how you can find out more about this story and others I write. So let's get to it. Chapter 51, Fight All the Way. So, how mad are you on a scale of 1 to 10? Caden's voice came clearly over their bond. The worry in it almost made Valerius assure him that all was well. Almost. 11. Valerius answered, wait, no, 15. 15? Why 15? Caden cried as Iolaire's eyes went as round as saucers. This is not a 15 situation. And how do you come to that exactly? No, I asked first. You have to tell me why, why you're so mad. Exactly. And then consider, um, consider not being mad, Caden said. Another desire to soothe Caden nearly overcame him at those plaintive words. But Caden had to understand how this ill-thought-out desire to go to the park and play with the children was when there were dragon shifters other than them in the city. Ah, let us start then. Valerius's left eyebrow rose. Humans first. Your sister trash-talking them. Then Tezaquatl. That was not my fault, nor was the Tilly thing. She has a mind of her own, and really, the humans first pitchfork-wielding mob was not my fault either. Caden sounded indignant, as if these arguments were very valid. And Tezaquatl? He seems pretty unstoppable, unless you're Raziel, so not my fault. None of it is my fault. If you had gone home like I instructed and you had agreed to, none of this would have happened, Valerius reminded him, demolishing these ridiculous statements. I? Well, it was just... Tilly wanted a ride, and I thought, how much harm could it possibly do? Caden wailed. Things just got out of hand but I have to be able to go places without you. Valerius pinched the top of his nose. I know this, Caden, but your adventures need to be kept to a minimum while the other dragon shifters are here. Dealing with humans first is one thing, but the dragon shifters. His eyes slid to Tezzaquatl, who was looking between them with avid interest, just as Esme had. They were being silent too long are too curious for their own good. Actually, I sort of like Tezzaquatl. He seems nice, Caden said. Iolaire looked almost shyly at the gold dragon shifter, not sure of him, but not rejecting him. You like him? Valerius had not meant to sound so outraged, or rather jealous. Suddenly, a dragon nose was pressed against his naked chest. I, I like you best. You know that, right? I'm just saying the others aren't all bad. Esme is cool, Tezzaquatl is funny, Alarian, well, forget Alarian, but they're nothing compared to you, I swear it, Valerius. More nosing, cold gushes of air against his skin, blowing his hair back, frosting him. And yet, Valerius was smiling. He couldn't help himself. Anger flowed away like water. The warmth that bloomed in his chest so suddenly was a little frightening. He swallowed and used his powerful will to hide it from Caden. This was too soon, too much. The young man would flee from it, and Valerius wouldn't blame him. Instead, he scratched Iolaire under the chin and between the ears. Tezzaquatl made a delighted sound and came nearer, hand outstretched. So cute, Tezzaquatl laughed. Oh, Iolaire is. Valerius caught his wrist in a none too gentle grip before he could reach the white scales. Iolaire reared a little back, looking at Tezzaquatl out of narrowed eyes. Its back was arched with alarm. What? What? Can I not pet Iolaire too? I am a very good petter, I assure you, Tezzaquatl stated with true earnestness. That caused Iolaire to look at Tezzaquatl with more curiosity than alarm. Petting was evidently Iolaire's kryptonite. You do not get to pet anyone, Valerius growled. Ah, you are doing that thing again. It is so strange to see you act this way about a person and not territory. Tez, Valerius barked. What about if Iolaire gives me permission? Tezaquatl wheedled, 
raising and lowering his eyebrows. Eilir hasn't. Tilly, who had been quiet, piped up. She looked down at them from up high. Valerius repressed a smile. She looked like a queen on her white throne, her white dragon throne. We should not be encouraging dragon riding, Raziel growled. And yet you were just imagining carrying her yourself, so I am confused, Valerius said as he caught an image from Raziel's mind showing just that. His spirit looked affronted and its wings shifted, but Valerius was not fooled by Raziel's grumpiness. He wasn't sure how he felt about someone riding on their back, as if they were a beast of burden, but Telly and the children looked to be having a marvelous time on Ailer, and he couldn't help but be affected by that in a positive way. Tezzaquatl looked up at Tilly and the other two before giving them a sweeping bow. Forgive me, my lady. You are quite right. Iolaire has said nothing to me yet. Valerius narrowed his eyes, and he never will, he thought. I'm not a lady, Tilly said in a very ladylike noble voice. Maybe I am, the other girl giggled by her side. Macaulay! Tilly rolled her eyes, but her voice was scandalized. The boy rocked back and forth, laughing at them both. He wiped his eyes of laughing tears. And who might you be, noble sir? Tezzaquatl asked. I'm Toby. This is Tilly, and that's Macaulay, if you didn't guess already. Toby answered eagerly, charmed by Tezzaquatl already. Valerius tried not to sigh. That was the problem with Tezzaquatl. Everyone liked him, even if he was slightly light in his thought processes. Power to the people, indeed. Does he not know how stupid people are? Valerius growled. King Valerius knows who I am, Tilly said archly. Valerius stiffened. For a moment, he thought she would give away everything, but then he remembered the dinner that had been on the news. If they pretended not to know one another entirely, that would seem strange. Oh, yeah, the dinner. Toby, though, looked slightly disbelieving. You talked about that all day. You're going to tell King Valerius the same thing so we can confirm it? It did occur, young man, Valerius said with a smile at Tilly. We had quite a good dinner and a wonderful talk. Mom is a good cook. So is dad. Next time you come, dad will have to cook, she said brightly. You think that he's coming to dinner again? Oh, God. Toby let his head fall back and groaned. You are taking meals with your people, Valerius. That is a good sign. Tezzaquatl punched his shoulder. It took a bomb threat to do it, Toby said helpfully. Uh, a bomb? Tezzaquatl frowned. It is a long story, Valerius told him. I look forward to a second dinner, Tilly. Without the bomb scare. Yeah, me too, she nodded eagerly. I can't believe he really came to dinner, and he seems to like you, Toby said weakly. Why did you think she was lying? It was on the news, Macaulay pointed out. Yeah, but, Toby said and frowned. Should we be bowing to him? Not in the least. Valerius waved an arm through the air. You stay where you are. Iolair will be taking you all home. Tilly, you must tell Iolair where you and your friends live. He said that with extra intensity. Caden undoubtedly knew where her friends lived, but he must seem not to. You are going to have Iolair leave so soon, Tezzaquatl cried. But we have barely begun to know one another, and Tezzaquatl! Tez, we do not have to be so formal here now that the press and your enforcers are gone, Tezzaquatl sniffed. Enforcers? Does he mean the police chief and the werewolves? Caden's confusion was obvious. He does. He has little love for authoritarian figures such as police, politicians, or even the wealthy. He believes they are the root of all evil, Larry said. So he doesn't rule. He's not one of those authoritarian figures? Caden's skepticism almost had of Larius laughing. There's a fair amount of self-blindness in Tezzaquatl. Tez, Caden corrected with a laugh. Valerius rolled his eyes. Yes, well, Tez is charming and quite vain. He believes he is the friend to the common man and woman. A and is he? I mean, I hear in the papers about him helping workers and stuff. Valerius shrugged. Each will have their own views on this. It is not how I rule my territory. You are talking. You are talking to one another somehow, Tezzaquatl exclaimed. Do you see lips moving? Valerius was back to scratching Iolair's chin. No, which is even more intriguing, Tezzaquatl said, which had Valerius internally groaning. 
Iolair, you need to take the children home, and then you are to go home. Valerius said the last, looking into Iolair's eyes. But not directly, Valerius cautioned. He was now thinking he had to be quite literal with Caden and Iolair. He wouldn't put it past them to go buzzing sheep or something. Go back to the pool and use the vehicle to get home. Leave the vehicle near the corner of Lester and Donovan. We'll do that, I swear, Valerius, Caden said, even as Iolair nodded. As the two of them were talking internally, Tilly rattled off both Toby and Macaulay's addresses, which Caden already knew, so he didn't have to listen. Seriously, Valerius, how mad are you? Caden pressed. Caden? I didn't mean for this to happen. Iolair and I thought that I know. You meant no harm, and you did no harm, in fact. Valerius grimaced. You handled humans first well. You did not panic and did not hurt anyone accidentally. Yeah, that guy was freaked, but all he did was pee himself, Caden chuckled. Iolair let out a chuff of amusement, too. But Valerius touched Iolair's nose. No more excitement for today. Iolair's head lowered. We promise no more. Though we'll miss you, Caden told him. You have no idea how much I will miss you. Valerius's mind voice caught. He cleared his throat, though. That would do little. Talk later? Call me? Tell me all the crazy stuff happening at the castle? Caden begged. Yes, I promise. Believe me when I say that thoughts of you and your amusement will help me keep my temper, Valerius replied dryly. He would try to enjoy what happened with the other dragon shifters just to report it to Caden and Nihilaire. All right, he felt Caden's joy. Now take the children home, Valerius instructed. I'll talk to you later, Caden said quietly. I hope you are enjoying Dragon's Reign so far. I've been talking a lot about the membership site I have, but I also do publish individual books under the pen name X Aratare, which have the same type of adventurous plot, magic around every corner, and happily ever afters as Dragon's Reign. While I love shifters, my biggest love is actually vampires. I have a book series out called The Vampires Club. It's about a cursed vampire and the young man whose blood may be able to cure him. It's filled with mystery, scheming, dark deeds, and, of course, sensual scenes. If you want to check it out, a link to the Vampires Club series is in the description down below. Now, you should probably take Macaulay home first and then head to Toby's and whoa! Tilly cried in joy as Iolair lifted off of the ground. She and the other two children grabbed on as Iolair rose up higher and higher. Then there were whoops and cries of delight as Iolair started flying towards neighborhoods in the mid to drop off its charges. Valerius and Tezzaquadl watched them all go in silence. Tezzaquadl put an arm around Valerius' shoulders. Do not be sad, Valerius. You'll see Iolair soon. I will insist upon it. Valerius rolled his eyes and shrugged off that arm, but gently. Let us go to high reach. You too have caused enough excitement this evening. Tezzaquadl made a mock salute and said, Yes, my king. Valerius shook his head and took two huge steps before letting the shift overcome him. Raziel let out a roar of delight and victory. They had sorted a disaster out without any loss of life or respect. He heard Tezzaquadl shift behind him, and soon Elderon was flying practically wingtip to wingtip beside Raziel. In the none-too-distant pass, this would have annoyed them both, but they had gotten used to flying tandem with Iolair recently. Speaking of Iolair, Raziel turned its head to catch sight of the white dragon flying over the west part of the mid. Iolair turned its head and let out a cry of greeting and then a gout of snow. Raziel returned the greeting by lighting the sky with fire. Elderon, thankfully, did not spurt hot metal, but did make a laughing cry. The two of them spiraled upwards until they reached the landing area right outside of his throne room. Raziel tilted its head down to indicate that Elderon should land there first. Elderon flapped its golden wings. The torches that framed the doors to the throne room caused those wings to look like they were on fire. Then Elderon slowly lowered to 20 feet down before it shifted, 
and Tezzacuatl dropped to the ground. Raziel and Valerius followed after. The doors to the throne room were open. As Valerius stood up, cool, dew-soaked grass under his feet, he saw Esme, still in her flowy blue dress, and Shioni, now clothed in a bronze silk and leather dress that covered less than it revealed. Beyond them was Alarion, glowering. His green eyes glowed poisonously. Clearly, someone is jealous, Valerius thought. Tezzacuadl raced to Esme, grabbing her in his arms and spinning her around so that her blue dress floated around her. Oh, you bad, bad man, Tez, Esme twittered as he set her down on her feet. I cannot help it. You are a vision, Esme. Every time I see you, you are more beautiful, Tezzacuadl said, completely unrepentant about being a bad, bad man. Then again, Esme didn't seem to mean it either. Bad man, bad man, you are scum, Tezzacuatl. You think to put some claim on Iolair? Alarion finished a drink and threw the cup on the ground. It clattered and bounced across the marble floor. One of his staff ran to follow it. Alarius's jaw clenched. Tezzacuatl, though, seemed completely unfazed by Alarion's sloppy anger. Instead, he spread his arms wide as one of his retainers strode up to him and put a gold and blue robe over his naked form. Then he took a glass of wine off of the tray offered to him by one of Larius' servants. You have as much claim to Iolair as I do to the sky. Ha! Tezzacuato laughed. Then what are you doing here? Alarion snarled as he grabbed some wine himself and guzzled it down. Shioni came to Valerius to offer him a robe. He took it from her and clothed himself as the others bickered. Well, as Tezzacuatl and Alarion bickered and Esme watched on. Is Iolair all right? Shioni murmured. In fine fettle. Sorry, but I am certain that they would do it all over again. Valerius smiled dryly at her. You think to prance and preen into Iolair's heart? Alarion's face was inches from Tezzacuatl who smirked at him, only causing Alarion to grow angrier. What do you have to offer, really? Peasants and poverty? Alarion let out an ugly laugh. Tezzacuadl's usually smiling face went dark, cheeks flaming and eyes narrowing. You speak of poverty and peasants, but what of your territory, Alarion? You have only prisoners, Tezzacuadl snarled. They were now nose to nose. Alarius took a cup of wine and sipped it as he watched them. You should step in, Shioni stated softly. Why? Valerius asked. A little blood spilled might be a good idea. Shioni looked at him with dismay. They'll destroy the throne room. It's stone, he shrugged. Valerius, you are the host. Having your guests brawl is not hospitable, she protested. He could hardly hide his smile. On the contrary, Shioni, this is only your second time with more than two of us in a room. Brawling is the least of what is expected. Shioni sighed. You just want to see their noses bloodied for flying above reach. You think that unwarranted? He lifted an eyebrow at her. Shioni's arms were crossed over her chest. No, no, of course not. But there has been so much violence in the last few days. More of it feels wrong. Valeria sighed. He thought how this would look through Caden's eyes. The young man would likely be unnerved, especially as they were ostensibly fighting over him. But the truth was that these were old arguments between the green and gold dragons. Do you really think that if I interfere between them that this will lower the aggression in that room? He gestured with his wine cup towards the throne room. Shioni pursed her lips, but then she lowered her head. You are correct. You are distressed. He put an arm around her shoulders. What is it? She shook herself. I do not know. I just have a feeling of foreboding. Whether it was one of her true seeings of the future, or just all the unrest wasn't clear to him. He did not like to see his normally feisty and lively counselor look so dour and dire. That was his role. I will tell you what. You can give them plushies, Larius said. Shioni immediately whirled towards him, eyes wide and lips parted. You mean I can give each of them a plushie of their own color? Yes. And maybe Caden can come with Wally to High Reach. I need to see him in person. You look like you're sucking on a lemon, Valerius, she laughed, but then leaned in and kissed his cheek. But you were so sweet for worrying about me. 
We have to keep our spirits up, Shioni. We are going to need every last ounce of patience, he warned her. She smiled at him, even as she was pulling out her phone and undoubtedly to speak to Wally about the plushies. He sighed and moved off just as they heard her say, Wally, it is Shioni. I, oh, Marban? You've been having a day, haven't you? I see. Well, no, you mustn't kill him. I realize, oh, he did that? My, that would be distressing. Her voice trailed off as he strode over to Esme. She was tapping the edge of her cup against her lower lip as she regarded the two other dragon shifters. Her blue eyes sparkled speculatively. She welcomed him with a smile, but her eyes flickered back to Valerian and Tezzacuatl as they shouted in each other's faces, circling the room, noses practically pressed together, looking as if they were about to grapple with one another and start rolling around on the floor. Did you ever see the old gladiator games? Esme asked. I did. I would love to see a death match between them, Valerius said. You like Tez. He annoys you, but you like him. Alarian. She let her voice drift off, looking at the green dragon. She let out a sigh. He's always been a bully and had more cunning than actual intelligence, but he seems more out of control than usual. Valerius looked at how Alarian's face was practically purple with rage. His hands were clenching at his sides as Tezzacuadal's taunting. They haven't been in each other's presence for 30 years, he reminded her. Yes, yes, that's true. But there's more to it than that. I think Ilarion is on edge, Esme murmured. He turned to look down at her face. About what? May has been pressing against his flank, she said. He doesn't trust anyone else to fight with him while she is working with whatever she has. Or they are allies, as they have been in the past, and this is a ruse. Though for what reason I cannot think. And Ilarion is hardly an actor, Ilarius pointed out. Things feel off balance, Valerius, Esme said and shook her head, clearly not pleased with her own words. Because of Iolaire. She had seemed nothing but charmed with Iolaire, but she, unlike Alarian, was a consummate actor. She smelled up at him. No, no, I am very fond of your little white dragon. My? His voice fell tight again. Oh, yes, Valerius, yours. She looked back at Tezzacuadal and Alarian. But I think you're going to have to do more than just gain Iolaire's affections to keep him. You will have to fight everyone and everything. Valerius gritted his teeth. He had a sense that she was right. I hope you enjoyed this week's chapter. Just a reminder that if you join Wraith Rain as a member, the membership is 15 to 20 episodes ahead of the free podcast. If you'd like to join and listen to all those extra podcasts, not to mention getting access to the other stories and manga on Wraith Rain, a link is down below.